turn it over to Michael Miller and he will outline the updates to the project. Um, thank you for being here. And I just wanna let you know, we will have time for a few questions at the end. Um, so please write those down and hold on to those uh, for the end of the presentation. So Michael. Thank you, Trevor. Um, good evening, my name is Michael Miller. Or I guess if you got it recording yet, uh, Trevor. Oh, it is okay. recording. All right. Well, good evening. My name is Michael Miller. Um, this is the second open house for the Union Street Northeast Family Friendly Bikeway Project. Um, this is a virtual open house on Tuesday, December 14th at 7 p.m., just for the record. Um, just to kind of go over an agenda of kind of what we're looking at for tonight. Um, first off, kind of go through a couple of housekeeping items, just one of those working through with these virtual meetings, how to, what kind of we're looking for. Um, then I'll go over some introductions of the design team. Uh, then go into kind of presenting a little bit of the background of the project. And then we'll talk about the uh, design for the project. Uh, look at kind of a, just a general overview of the schedule and then go into if there's any questions or comments at the end. Um, just kind of that cap, the housekeeping items. Um, just wanted to remind everybody during the uh, presentation, if you can keep your microphone muted, that way we can help with some background noise. Um, if you have any questions, feel free. You can write them in the chat. We'll, we'll, uh, Trevor will kind of look at those as we're getting towards the end and let uh, read those out as we get there. So that we do have questions, we can kind of try to get those answered or at least kind of note them so that we can look into uh, getting responses to those. Um, if, if for any reason you do lose connection, um, you can always reconnect and come back into the meeting. Um, and this meeting is being recorded uh, to for meeting minutes and to also put on the uh, website after the meeting as well. Um, for introductions, um, like I said, I'm Michael Miller. I'm a senior project manager with the city of Salem. Um, this project is being uh, designed by a consultant, HHPR. Um, the Bo Brayman is the associate principal with HHPR, and then Bobby Jackson is the uh, project engineer. Um, just to go over a little bit of the background of the project, um, this project started uh, from the in 2011 in the Central Salem Mobility Study. That's when the uh, study started. Uh, the study was completed in uh, 2013 and uh, recommendations were presented to council and shortly thereafter in, uh, adopted. In 2014, those recommendations were in, then incorporated into the Salem Transportation System Plan. So that's kind of where this project kind of spurred from is from that, that study. In 2017, uh, the first uh, of the family friendly bikeway improvements was completed and that was by adding in the traffic signal and uh, bike signal at the intersection of union and commercial. And from the Central Salem mobility study, that was one of the short term goals which they had classified to be done within a 10 year period uh, to start facilitating that project. Um, currently, uh, again adopted from the Central uh, Salem Mobility Study under one of the midterm projects, which they was anticipated to occur within 15 years from that study, is the phase that we're currently looking at uh, to provide uh, bicycle facilities on union between commercial and winter streets. Um, in that study, it gave that options may include a, a one-way or two-way cycle tracks, uh, buffered bike lanes, shared use paths, and other facilities. And it was noted that at the time of the study and in the recommendations that implement, Im, implementations of improvements on Union Street would, in, would require removal of existing on-street parking and that additional parking could be added but would impact trees. And then kind of looking forward, um, 
the uh, there is a longer term goal which then takes uh, the Union Street bike uh, project and extends it all the way through to the 12th Street promenade at uh, 12th and Marion is where that would terminate. So where this project is kind of, this is the project location map, um, where this is, this project is looking at is starting at the end of the project that was here at uh, Union and Commercial and running all the way down and we're actually looking at going a block further than the uh, study had indicated for the midterm goal and ending currently at Summer Street, where there is currently ex um, existing bike facilities to tie into. One other thing to note is that the, a new traffic signal would be also located at the intersection of Liberty and Union, one to aid in both pedestrian and uh, bike facility traffic to be able to cross uh, Liberty easier than what they can today. So this is kind of next few slides are getting into kind of the design and I'll turn the little bit of time over to Bobby and Bo and let them kind of talk through a little bit of their where the, the design has taken them so far and then we'll pick it up from there. You want, Bobby, you want me to do it or you got it? Um, I can do it. All right. Um, yeah, feel free to jump in though um, if I miss anything. Um, but hi guys, I'm Bobby Jacobson, the project engineer on this one. Um, so I guess to start off, um, kind of following what Michael has already said, but the goal was to ultimately make this a family friendly bikeway. Um, but we also wanted to do it within the existing parameters of the street. Um, so we wanted to think about not um, adding a bunch of impervious area, um, kind of using what's there now so we make a minimal environmental impact and protect as many trees as possible. So that's kind of how we landed with this design and this section. So on Union Street, um, Union Street between Commercial and Liberty, we're maintaining the existing width of the road um, with three travel lanes, including or two travel lanes, including one turn lane, um, and then we're able actually to um, maintain the on-street parking, which is nice on this section. So the bike lanes will actually go behind the parking stalls. Um, and we'll again protect the existing curb lines and width of the width of the roadway. Um, at Liter Liberty Street, as Michael mentioned, there will be a new signal um, to help with traffic, and we'll be rebuilding each um, corner of the intersection with new ADA ramps. So another process we went through for this project is we analyzed and evaluated each. Um, corner of every intersection to check if it met current um, ADA accessible requirements and to make sure it met city standards. And if it didn't meet uh, standards, that's the ones we will be rebuilding. So on this corner, we're proposing to rebuild every ramp. Um, by, I guess by, one... by standards, what he's talking about is roadway classification curb return radius is so some of the existing radii out there are, are pretty tight and so it doesn't give trucks a you know a big enough um kind of swooping movement to make the turn so that the curb return improvements are twofold ada improvements and then also to meet the roadway classification uh standards for transportation and then also one one more thing uh bobby mentioned protecting existing trees um, we are removing existing parking. Uh, another big pro project key element to this is we are staying within the existing right of way throughout the project, so we do not have to initiate a right of way um, program and buy right away from um, local businesses and property owners. Yeah, so we can probably um, go to the next slide. So um, you'll notice on High Street. 
we're actually at that intersection, we're actually able to remove the existing turn lanes, um, which allows us to narrow up the crosswalk, which actually makes that more sa safer for pedestrians. Um, so we kind of transition from a three lane section down to a two lane section between Liberty and High. And again, we're able to maintain on street parking on, along this block, which is nice. And the, the bike lanes, again, will go behind the parking. Um, at High Street, two of uh, the north east and southeast corners. Um, so the southeast corner actually does have one of those 10 foot radius curb returns, but looking at the vehicle movements and the current ramps, we felt that it was okay to leave that one. Um, but the northwest and southwest curb returns and ramps will be reconstructed. Um, as we move further east, this is where we again transition to a two lane section um, where the bike lanes are actually adjacent to the roadway. Um, but we are providing a two foot or three foot buffer um, between the travel lane and the bike lane. So it creates a bit of a buffer, which just makes it feel safer when you're riding on that bike lane. Um, we're showing to um, construct a few parking spaces where we'll actually widen the roadway. You can see that kind of on the eastern half of the block on the south side. And that's to provide some parking for the adjacent um, residential property. Um, so this will add some impervious area, but um, we felt it was worth the extra area to provide that much needed parking. Um, at Church Street, we're, we're proposing to reconstruct every ramp um, to better meet the standards that Bo talked about. Um, between church and cottage is pretty straightforward. Again, um, we're aiming to protect every tree because we're protecting the existing curb line. And like I said, it's just the standard two lane um, section with the bike lanes. Um, it, the bike lanes are basically located where the parking used to be. At Cottage, again, we're reconstructing all four corners. Um, they currently have this funky little um, bulb out. So we're um, looking to reconstruct that with more of a standard um, radius. And then, so again, between Cottage and Winter, the standard two lane section, um, one thing to note at the southwest corner of winter, there's an existing bus stop there. Um, and it's a bit tricky situation to make sure that the bus movements and cyclist movements don't cause any safety issues. Um, so we're proposing that the bicycles will come off of the roadway and go at, actually go behind the bus stop loading area. Um, and then it will kind of be a separated bike, lo bike lane for that short duration until you reach the winter intersection. This way, when a bus stops um, for passengers to load, there won't be an issue with the bicycle um, conflicting with that. Um, so other than that, the northeast corner needs to be reconstructed, but the other two, the Northwest and Southeast curb returns are pretty good. There might be need to be a minor adjustment to the Northwest ramp. And then this is the last block from winter to summer. Um, and it will be the two lane section with the bike um, lane adjacent to the roadway within the existing roadway footprint. And then we'll end our improvements at summer. All right, thank you, Bobby. I think one of the things to note is right now we're also looking at what would be 
applicable signage to kind of as you're heading eastbound on Union Street for the bikes to let them know that the bike lane does not con necessarily continue down Union Street, but that there is uh, bike lanes on Summer Street that they can transition onto. Just trying right now, finding out what exactly that signage would look like is one of the things that we're still working towards. Um, kind of looking at what the schedule is right now, we're currently working on trying to fin finalize the preliminary design. Uh, we're, the goal is to have the final design done and approved uh, both through the city and through uh, with this being a federal project. It also requires uh, review and concurrence through ODOT. So getting all of the plans through ODOT as well. By uh, looking at April of next year, with construction starting, we're looking at uh, hopefully no later than August of 2022. And that again is kind of pending on making sure that the federal uh, funding obligation gets matched up with this project as well. Um, just kind of one thing, just kind of wrap up the end of the presentation here uh, before we go into questions and comments is that uh, again, this was the presentation for Union Street. Um, I have my contact information, both uh, phone number and uh, email address here. One thing to note here at the bottom is that uh, the website for the project is uh, cityofsalem.net backslash union hyphen street hyphen bikeway. And on that site, we do have a box in there that uh, you can click on for sharing your thoughts on the, on the project. And that does put in a, sends an email into the design team and with the comments. So one thing I would note there is that it does have two questions. One is so you can insert your comments. And the second one is giving you the option to fill out a voluntary title uh, six question error. And that is one of the things that's required where we're hosting this meeting, meeting and able to be eligible for federal funds. We've got to provide the, it's a federal document is that we have kind of turned into a survey. Um, that does ask for just some kind of general statistical information on, on yourself, just so that they can keep record. Um, that is again, optional. But if there is questions that you have that uh, you'd like information back on, if you do at least put a, a name and a um, contact information in your comment, because we don't see the information from the Title VI survey, that does not come to us. So if you can at least put information into that that comment box that helps us so that we can at least reach back out to you. If you do have a question or comment that we can at least get your response. So with that, I think we're kind of open it up to some question and comments. I know um, Trevor, I, what's the uh, typical format that we typically use on? Well, there's one question in the chat. And uh, it's from Ian Davidson asking, are you really able to gain that much room from just making the parking parallel instead of diagonal? So I'm assuming he's talking about the first two blocks where it currently is uh, angled parking. Um, the angled parking right now um, is from curb to the end of the parking stall is, uh, is 15 feet is what is the dimension out there. Um, by changing it to a uh, parallel parking, the parking stalls are eight feet. And then we have the six feet plus the buffer is what makes up that 18, that 18 feet in those areas. Yeah. We have one hand raised. Uh, Paul, go ahead and ask your question. Yeah, good evening, everybody. Paul Tigan, I'm the um, land use chair for the Grant Neighborhood Association. And I also live on Church Street, just uh, in between uh, Union and D. Um, so uh, Michael and Bobby, thank you for the, the presentation. I think that um, just my initial reaction is that the, the design is improved from the last thing 
um, the, the last iteration that I saw, just in terms of the number, number of street trees um, that would be impacted, especially by the, the state buildings um, near summer and winter. I wonder, and I, I don't, um, I don't bring this up to try and like turn back the clock or anything, but I, just from your perspective, I wonder if you can describe um, maybe from an alternatives perspective, um, why you guys didn't consider a two lane bikeway on one side of the street, as opposed to, you know, bike lanes pushed out to the outside of each direction of vehicle traffic. Um, Paul, I think kind of trying to answer the question, one of the one things that kind of came up when we were kind of working through the different kind of alternatives is where this is kind of picking up traffic at different ends of the project where they would already be on, mm -hmm. you know, a designated side of the street. It was trying to maintain that. I know, you know, we've kind of gone through, we were looking at the entire corridor clear down to 12th at one point before we started, you know, when we were in the really preliminary stages. And I know that's kind of one of the things looking at further down is we run into further down right away issues that we can't, especially once they start the uh, 12th street or union starts turning into uh, 12th or yeah, into 12th, we have the railroad tracks that we can't push and gain any right away. So what we'd be looking at is kind of moving them both to one side on that end, but it was mm -hmm. kind of trying to create a, it's creating a strange transition that where's the right spot to make that is kind of the question that, and what, you know, what the correct answer is right now is kind of hard to, to figure out. Yeah, no, I appreciate that. I, I mean, I think that was kind of, one of the hard parts about the project area is just it's that six blocks and the continuity on either side of it. So I, I appreciate the answer. Um, I, I guess the one thing, just my comment on it in terms of someone who does bike up and down that street and, and around this part of Salem, when you put the bike lane, in, and I know this is closer to the downtown section as opposed to the state building section, but when you put the bike lane on the other side of parked vehicles, it just decreases the visibility of the bikers to the moving traffic. And, and maybe that's only a concern between, you know, Liberty and High Street on this design. Um, and maybe those two parking spots near the apartment buildings um, closer to church. But um, that part really sticks out to me as um, like there's a there's a tension there. We want the bikes the bikes to be both protected and visible, so that people understand they're on a bikeway as much as they're on a carway, and we also want them to be protected from the cars. So that's my comment. And then my question, I I'll leave it to other folks after this. Um, my question is what is gonna be the physical barrier between the bicycles and the cars? So is it just gonna be two, two striped painted lanes or will there actually be um, concrete barriers or you know, the, you know, um, the, the sort of removable barriers? So to kind of answer your question there, that is kind of a question that has been coming up late, recently and the design is to it's a it is a painted you know buffer there is no you know as you're putting it a physical separation between them and that's kind of being derived one by design standards that we have that we need to maintain and we're kind of that really a lot of, of that stems from is on a maintenance side if there is a barrier there it makes it so it is too narrow to get the sweeper through there. So that would be a, somebody have to go out there with a broom, however many times, you know, whatever frequency that is to do the maintenance, to clean that up, to, so that drainage moves through there. And, you know, in order to make that any wider, 
then that gets us into widening the street. And then that's where we kind of run into adding more pervious pavement, removing trees. And that was kind of getting on the verge there of the uh, climate action that they're working through now. Uh, you know, we don't want to make more impervious surfaces and removing trees. No, yeah. I, I appreciate that push and pull. I'll, I'll leave it at that and see if there's <laughs> other folks. Ian, you're next. Thank you. Yeah, I'm hoping uh, you might be able to um, describe what kind of protection you'll be offering at the intersections. From the look of it, um, from the mock-ups that you did, there's a color difference between um, the what appears to be the bike way around the bump, the bull bouts, um, than the other road, but I couldn't see if there were any bollards or any other kind of protective uh, barriers for the bikers around those turns. And I'm, I'm a, a secondary piece of this is that I'm hoping that uh, by having bollards or some other things that it will slow down traffic uh, around those corners, especially since Union's not much of a thoroughfare. So yeah, so right there, it's darker black. Yeah. Uh, what the darker black there is actually indicating is like here on church, that's where the existing curb and gutter line is. So when this gets reconstructed, the curb line comes back. So that's going to be the pavement, the new pavement that gets put in is what that's the darker is indicating. Um, and that's new asphalt for the the street, not for the street. Sidewalk. Correct. Okay. Thank you. So, and as for, you know, the intersections, we, what we'd be looking at would be kind of a shared, you know, really kind of a stop bar that the vehicles would have that same location kind of to stop and be able to look both directions, I guess, before they proceed is kind of right now what the thought is for dealing with the bicycle lanes at the intersections. Do you, if I may, a follow up. Sure. So like on, on High Street, you have the bicycle facilities one way. Are you thinking of something in particular for those intersections where um, there's the north-south interchange, if that makes sense? You know, that's one that I think we were looking at, again, what the signage might be for when we have these, ex you know, existing facilities, just to notify that they're, you know, bikers, bicyclists that you know, there's different avenues besides going straight. So again, some, you know, the finer details still still to work out. I, I guess I understand the, the sign, what is that called, wayfinding. Um, I, I'm, I'm wondering if there's gonna be any protected facilities for those turns for, is particularly onto high, and I think it's church is the other north south. Does that make sense? Because you, you presently have bike facilities that intersect with Union that head north-south. Yeah. Um, you know, I can't say that that's something that we've dived too far into at this point. So that's one thing I will note so we can at least look at it and be able to provide some sort of information back on that. Great. Thank you so much. Councilor Stapleton, you're next. Hi, everybody. Thanks so much for having me and thanks for everybody showing up. This is fantastic. Um, sorry for being late. I had a neighborhood association meeting uh, to go to first. Uh, so I kind of came in in the middle of the presentation. Um, but from the looks of it, this really is um, turning out to be a really fantastic project. And I thank you all for all of your work. Um, I love that we're not losing trees. I love that you had listened to the public outcry about that and made some adjustments. Um, and so that's wonderful. Um, and I also believe that we're getting an extra block because last time I saw this, I thought we were stopping at some or at winter, but we're now stopping at summer. Is that an addition or did I just miss that the first time around? So first time around, we, we have been going from commercial to summer. Okay, great. Well, I love that. Um, I know that this is out of the scope of the project, but I would love to see um, see this connect up with the uh, promenade eventually. And I would love to use existing lanes there or the parking that's um, already on the street there in between Summer and Capitol. Um, and I'd love to see that 
those lanes turned into protected bike lanes um, so that we can finally get this little section here connected up with the promenade, which I know is the end game. Um, so for those of you who are interested in that, know that I am thinking about that and trying to find ways that we can get this project um, all the way up there. Um, I did too have questions about vertical dividers. Um, so that's something that I'm, I'm paying attention to. And, and I don't know uh, if there's um, other gear that could be, um, other equipment that could be used uh, for the smaller uh, sections. Um, I know the state has smaller rigs that they use on their sidewalks. Um, so I'm not sure if that's something that we can maybe look towards in the future, not only just for this project, but as we move to a more protected bike lane um, kind of design for the whole city, this isn't just a Union Street question. This is a question for the whole city and how are we going to address it? Because it's a real concern. You know, I hear from people a lot saying, I'd ride my bike more, but, you know, the the bike lanes all crowded up with sticks or, you know, whatever. It's not safe for me to, to ride. So um, I understand that that's a serious concern, but um, I also see it as a problem that we're going to have to tackle in the coming years. Um, so I would love to see some kind of vertical divider, um, but if we can't, you know, maybe it's just a curb, a, a low curb that a sweeper could drive over easily, um, but that uh, it could be a, a reminder to cars that they're venturing into an area that wasn't designed for them. So um, I also had questions about the signage and wondering if the signage that you're looking at, is it only geared towards the the person on a bike or is there also signage geared towards the folks who are choosing to drive and reminding them that they're entering um, this family friendly bike way? Is there any kind of signage like that that we're looking at? You know, the signage is one that we're just kind of, we haven't quite got to that development part of that part yet. You know, one trying to get the design down is the first part. The signs are kind of one of those that we can you know, work at towards the end. So, but I will at least note, you know, driver awareness as well. Yeah, I think that'd be great. Um, and then I did have a question about um, when I kind of came into this project, we were having some struggles with, um, with our standards that said you had to replace parking that you were taking away. And I'm wondering how you all um, took care of that. I know that that was a struggle in the beginning. Is it, uh, have we found replacement parking spots for the ones that we're losing nearby or have we found a way around that problem um, to so that we're not having to struggle with that? Is that something you know about that you could enlighten me on? So one of the things that was done and this was, you know, at the beginning of the project prior to, you know, things slowing down and less use from COVID, um, there was a few um, parking utilization counts done out there finding out, you know, which how many spots were being used out of the total number out there. And so we've, we had some good numbers from to work with. And we went through and found, you know, took the number that this project would still be maintaining. And then uh, working through with the traffic planning group, we actually found that by using a few of the adjacent areas that did not have any utilization that we could maintain as what the requirement was asking was maintaining the same amount of utilization was kind of the term that was listed in there that you know we had sufficient to be able to take these away and we had enough nearby to meet that requirement. That's good news. Thank you so much for that. Um, and again, just thanks for all your guys' work on this. It's and the timeline is so soon. I, I get really excited when I think about this project because um, like many folks on this call, um, me, my kiddos, my family, we all use this area. So really excited to use it uh, in an even uh, more enhanced way. So I appreciate all your hard work on this. Yeah. All right, if anybody else has a question, feel free to unmute and ask away. Um, this is Paul. I've got another question. I was going to um, let other folks, but I'll just dive in. I wonder if, did you guys, um, as designers of this project, kind of, you know, take a, take a look at what happened over the course of the summer with the closures for the project and just consider any of that? Um, I think we learned a lot as a neighborhood and grant 
um, uh, when it came to the union and, and winter street closures. And I just wonder driver behavior and how people reacted to the closures and things like that. Did, did that kind of play into any of your, you know, reconsiderations of, of what this project could look like? Cause it, it, some of the, what happened with, with drivers was really surprising to us. And I, I just wonder what you guys thought about that sort of experiment over the summer and if it played into your design. You know, I haven't heard, you know, anything particular. Um, I know I've been working with, you know, our traffic engineer and the traffic planning group. And I know their concern is at least maintaining the same amount of, you know, lanes and through traffic through there, because, you know, they consider Union Street kind of a, you know, arterial isn't the, the correct term to use, but it's kind of like a secondary. So if stuff starts getting blocked because of different things that that's kind of a secondary route. And I know it's it's one of the routes for both chariots and one of the main routes for even emergency services use uh, union quite a bit. And that's, and again, that's kind of one of the deriving factors behind the curb radiuses that we're looking at is to be able to get the buses and fire trucks around corners. So I know that that was kind of one of the things that they wanted to be able to maintain what's currently out there um, without having, you know, major impacts. So other than that, I have not heard any, you know, kind of feedback from them on how, you know, the closures went during the summer. I know that they were, they were paying attention to them. Yeah, I guess specifically, I would just say it was surprising to hear from neighbors the amount of like, aggressive behavior and and I'm sure Virginia heard more than I did but just in terms of like and and we saw it too is and I think it I guess my comment about it is really think about the signage and the use of green paint and really showing drivers like why we're doing this you know that we really want to welcome bicycles to this part of the um, to the part of the infrastructure. And again, building on Ian's suggestion to have even kind of pro slightly protected turn lanes. Um, people driving around closures, like clearly it said road closed. People re responding to bicyclists, like you're not supposed to be here when the road is clearly closed to cars. Um, I, I think that what we would ask the city to consider in the design is that the design of the infrastructure matters when it comes to mediating those conflicts because they play out and someone clearly has more power in that conflict right it's the person yeah. with the <laughs> with the 3.4 liter engine and so that kind of gets to my question of well did you consider you know totally protected two-way bike lanes or you know so I, I don't know, I'm, I'm not, I don't have a critique of your design, but it's just something I wanna elevate for you to think about as you move through the finalization of the design is that the design matters in terms of building that relationship between the bicyclists, the pedestrians and the drivers. Okay, thank you. That's good to, good to hear. Can I jump in on that too? Um, I, I really want to reiterate the, the whole green paint thing, because that was actually one of my questions. And then, Paul, you just you knew exactly what I wanted to say. Um, when I'm turning, when I'm driving and I turn onto a road and in my side view, peripheral view, I catch that green paint. I know that I'm looking out for bikes. And I think that a lot of drivers are like that. You know, it's it, when you see the other colors, right? You're, you're kind of, you're making all of these decisions as a driver um, based on all of these long held uh, responses to signals um, that are being handed to you as you drive um, through the city. And so I would really encourage the use of the green paint, especially around the intersections, because it just helps elevate the fact that we've got folks who are coming through here that are not protected and uh, they need a little extra protection. And um, 
Yeah. So thanks, Paul, for bringing that up. And and I agree it was a um, experiment in human behavior over the summer. And every time I was out there, uh, which was pretty much every Saturday, I um, had to do a lot of deep breathing. And um, it was um, amazing. You know, I was talking to bicyclists who have been spat on and yelled at and uh, really degraded because they choose to ride a bike. And so um, I don't want to ever assume the worst in people, but I also want to be real about this when we come into this situation where we understand the challenges that folks who are riding bikes are truly facing and using the chance and every opportunity we have to educate folks who are choosing to drive vehicles um, about their responsibility in this situation and to understand that we're all very equal of living through the end of the day and getting to where we want to go with the mode of transportation that we choose to use. So um, I would really appreciate you guys looking into to that green paint and, and those protected um, bike lanes. And then also the, the turns, I thought Ian brought up a really good point about that. Right, thank you. William, William, you're next. Hi, um, I just want to say, uh, I, I actually don't live in Salem. I'm actually on the East Coast. Um, I just heard about this meeting and I've been really into like city planning and getting away from uh, um, car focused design in cities. And I just wanted to applaud you guys on how you guys are approaching this. Um, and it's a great it's a great step towards reducing traffic. It's a great step towards uh, all the different all the different problems that that car infrastructure can bring. Um, I I'm a, I just want to re, um, reiterate what Ian was saying. Um, having protected turn lanes, there's. <clears throat> Sorry, not turn lanes, but protected bicycle paths and intersections. There's, there's, I know there's a lot of different ways to go about doing it that makes those intersections safer. And intersections are one of the biggest, uh, one of the biggest places where bike crashes can happen. And so I think, you know, again, I'm not in the area. I'm not, I don't know very much, but I, I would highly suggest. I think it would be great to look into that. Um, so just wanted to, and what River Virginia say, the, the type of vitriol that people get, it's actually very common. Um, I'm very familiar with it myself. Um, but uh, just uh, wanted to give my two cents from across, across the country. Thanks, guys. Thank you. All right, we'll just have a few more minutes for questions. Does anybody else have any questions for our team? All right, well, I, you know, on behalf of the design team, I'd like to thank everybody for at least participating. Um, I'd like to at least remind you that there is the website, um, cityofsalem.net backslash union hyphen street hyphen bikeway that has the uh, box on there. Uh, tomorrow we'll post the uh, video from this uh, uh, presentation as, long, as well as um, we do have the uh, slides as a PDF form that we'll also post as well so that you, know, you don't have to go through and watch the whole presentation in order to see a certain slide. Um, but those will be up on the website and then there's also the spot to, so you can click and again, be able to provide us comments that and we will kind of take what we get and see what we can incorporate into the final design. So, so again, thank you all for participating tonight. Thank you all. Thank yeah, you. Thanks, everyone.